we're just hearing that energy bills in January are set to go up to £4,266. That's a quadrupling of where we were currently at. We had heard it was going to go up to about £3,000. It's gone up to £4,000 as an estimate over the last couple of days. And there's a really strange thing that's happening. People are talking about what to do about these bills as if somehow you're still going to be able to pay them. So some dimwit intern on the BBC has been tasked with coming up with how you can save money by turning off a few light bulbs or having one shower less a week or putting on one load of washing less a week. That isn't the answer. Scrimping and saving to try and earn enough money to try to afford this isn't the answer. Then you have other lunatics out there talking about how you might try and pay for this, how the government might be able to provide some sort of package of support to assist people in paying this, to assist people in paying £4,000 plus a year for their energy bills. That's completely the wrong mentality. This can't be a bit about how can you scrimp on this to try and afford to pay this or what help can you get to try and afford to pay this. This has to stop. This has to be stopped in its track. It is not possible that we can live in a country where people have to worry about the fact they simply cannot afford under any circumstance to pay for the energy bills coming into their homes at the same time as these energy suppliers are making record profits. What on earth are the regulators doing? What on earth is off-gen or off-what doing? They're not regulating anything. We have to assume collective action at this point. I've always been a fan of Thatcher. I still am. But it doesn't really matter what people's politics are right now. It doesn't matter if you're left or right or centre or green or whatever. The simple fact is people can't afford to pay the bills that are going to be sent to their homes. And the only way to handle this now is collective action. And I never thought I would hear myself say those words. But the point is, if we don't all agree to say we're simply not paying this stuff, then the most vulnerable, those least able to afford stuff, and these are ordinary people, working people, couples who are both working, people who are trying to run a business but can't afford to pay for any of this stuff, we all have to stand together. This isn't just unionised labour or workers or nurses or bin men. This is everybody now. We have to be all in and sign up to say we won't pay this. And people say, yes, but the risk is this to me. Well, the risk is this to me. The risk is it might affect my credit rating. The risk, yes, there's risks. There's always risks. People often ask me how I do some of the things I do. And the, the first thing, the, the bottom line on it all, the fundamental is, do you accept risk? How much risk are you prepared to take? The reason I can do many of the things I can do is because my appetite for risk is limitless because there's nothing I really fear. We have to now work together to say, no, we're not going to pay this. The government has to sit down with the regulator, with the energy suppliers and with representatives of ordinary people and sort this crap out. Because the way we sort this isn't by scrabbling around to get some pennies together to try and make something work. The way we sort this is by stopping it. And the only way we stop this is with collective action. And that does always involve individual risk. We aren't the French. <laughs> That's usually a good thing. The spirit of revolution isn't there within the British people. You literally would have to put a British person's shoes on and put a coat on them and pay for their bus ticket to get them out on the streets. But, you know, there is something the British people do have, and that is that we don't like to see the underdog suffering. We are all about cheering on the underdog. We love it when the underdog's doing all right. And that's exactly what this is. You have to say, no, none of us are going to pay this in order to force the conversation at a government regulator and supplier level, in order to stand up for the underdog. And that seems like a very British thing to do indeed. I am not going to pay 
my direct debits from the 1st of October. I accept all the risks that go with that, but I'm not prepared to stand by and do nothing whilst people worry about how they're going to cope, survive, or even make it through this winter. We've had too much of that already.